as you may know, I've been doing quite a bit of filming lately, and as an amateur, it's been a steep learning curve. And today I noticed that there's a few things I've picked up that are so small but make such a big impact that it would be worth sharing. Now, some people would write them down and have their checklist somewhere close by to share as a PDF. Well, that's not me. So I thought I would just share on the screen some of those small tips. Now, the funny thing is, <laughs> I started filming this about five minutes ago before I realized one of those small but really, really crucial points I'd forgotten. Switch on the mic. Oh, really? I filmed all the tips for you and realized the mic is not on. <laughs> so no matter what microphone you've got, do that sound check. Yes, even if you've done the same thing over and over again for months, check it every time. So now that the mic's on, let me start you where I start every time I walk into the film studio. So my studio is right next door to our laundry room and bathroom. Obviously, I put a sign on the door saying, don't use this one, and everybody keeps their legs crossed for the rest of the day. Because it's a laundry room, we have the fan turned on in there all the time due to humidity. And so one of the things I have to remember now is to turn that fan off as I enter the film studio. Because although we've got good insulation and it's a whole room away, that buzz gets picked up on the camera even if you've got a fabby dabby mic. That background hum, the one that drives everybody nuts, it's coming from all the machinery you've got in the area that may be buzzing. A fan, an air conditioner, all those kinds of things. I also close all the doors and windows, which makes it incredibly hot in here. So there is a lovely window behind this green screen. I make sure that's closed. And then there's a big curtain and a blind between there. I make sure they're poured and there's no sun peeking through. I don't switch these bright lights on until I really need them because it's gonna get so hot in here. And all patio doors, windows, and fans are closed and off. One of the things I've found a lot lately is the room light. Now, it, you wouldn't even notice if I switch that light on or off right now. It's a very small light compared to these massive studio lights, and it's a little more yellow, it's a warmer light. But if I forget and leave that little blighter on, I cannot key out the green screen anywhere near as easily as I can is the days I remember to switch it off. So that one I did write down and I have a big note by the camera and at the light switch saying, switch me off. If you've been following me for a while, you know I wear glasses and I love my glasses, but sometimes they're a bit of a pain. Thankfully, I have two pairs and I rely on both pairs right now. Let me tell you why. These are my regular specs. Love them, great distance vision, great close-up vision, just love them, love them, love them. The problem is they change color in the sun and they have a reflective coating on them or anti-reflection coating, I guess, is what it really is. What I've been noticing in any of my film, green screen or regular background, is that when I turn to the lights to talk to somebody, that light showed up later in the film as a big green or purpley square on my glasses. Also, at certain angles, the green screen spill fills my glasses and I can't easily get rid of it. So the simple solution is I can either take them off and not see anything or I put on my reading glasses. Thankfully, Mayfair Optometric got these reading glasses sorted for me and these and they kept the top half distant for me so I didn't fall over if I had to get up to go to the loo or if somebody come in I could tilt my head down and see them. The nice part about that is I can check now that the red button of recording is on, the sound is on, everything's working, and then when I put my head up, even though you're a bit blurry, I can see you enough and I can see that the lights are not making a huge reflection impact and the green screen is not spilling too much onto my glasses. Hey, these are all tiny things, but they've made a huge difference to my filming and the results of the editing. A couple more. Now, you know, if you know me well, the line of work I'm in, I'm always saying, put life before looks, life before looks, and don't focus so much on your appearance. Don't let your perception of your appearance interfere with you filming, getting up on stage, talking to somebody, going out, doing your job, whatever it is. Just don't let it get in the way. 
So normally I would brush my hair in the morning, forget about it for most of the day, and then occasionally if I'm going on camera, I run a brush for it. That's it. But what I've discovered, especially with green screening, is I have to brush my hair just before I hit the red button on the camera. The reason is because I have such flyaway hair is the little wispy bits that stick up especially if I've been wandering around the house, closing all the doors, getting hot and flustered, and then standing in front of the camera, it may still look tidy, but little extra wispy bits start to dance when we do post-production and remove the green screen through the Kia. So any little extras that the Kia can't quite handle does this little jiggly movement, and it drives me nuts. So if you're a visual person like me, they are so distracting, gotta get rid of them. So you can mess around with the Kia all you like, but it's going to start changing your skin color. It's going to start affecting the edge spill. The easiest thing is, is to smooth out those little wispies. So I brush it down just before I hit the red button. La 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 la. And then Sophia Pastra gave me this wonderful hair oil. I use the tiniest drop and I just put it on the edge of my hair and it gets all those little wispy ones down and flat. And because we have no airflow in here, my hair stays in perfect condition for the shoot, making the post-production green screen key in so much easier. A couple more and then we're finished for now. And if I come up with more later, I'll let you know. The remote control, I love this little guy. It's so easy, sometimes I forget to put it down. It is nice if you can put it down. And of course, when you do pick it up and put it down, remember to pause before you continue talking. The good thing about it is I can zoom in and out so you can get a much closer look at me or whatever it is I'm working on and talking to you about. See, that's pretty close. Now, one thing to note if you're gonna zoom in and out is this camera has a smooth zoom and that's good. My old camera never used to. And so when you zoomed in and out, it was very jerky or it would go so fast, it would make the person viewing a little seasick. So just check on your zoom. And if you've got a smooth zoom, you can really use it to your advantage. And you may scare the viewers every now and again, but that's what it's all about. But remember to pause when you're finished, put down the remote, pause before you start and continue unless you've got a pocket you can slide it into. One of the other things I brought from the stage to the screen is the most simplest. Just have some water with a little lemon juice. Please don't use ice. Please don't use a whole lemon. Get rid of those pips because you're going to choke on them. It happens every speaker. But what it does is it takes the saliva down a little. So instead of all those sounds, you're gonna have a smooth voice, you won't get sticky, and it'll make it a lot easier for you to pronounce the words the way you want to, even with my crazy accent, without driving people nuts with the <coughs> sounds. Okay, so I won't go <coughs> and drive you nuts. Little drop of water, ideally not visible to your audience. They have no idea what's in this cup. And if you know me really, really well, you know it's not water I tend to drink, it's Yorkshire tea. But actually any dairy products are a real bummer before you get up and speak because that dairy thickens the saliva and you really get that <coughs> mouth. So avoid dairy before you get up on stage, especially if you're a little nervous or before you get in front of the camera. Okay, last but not least. This studio is baking hot. I have 24 foot of fabric around the whole room. Over there, I have a full white background and I fold it up so that it's hanging maybe eight foot by 10 foot rather than the full 20 foot, four foot by 12 that it is. Over here, I have the same, but in black. And behind me, I have the green screen. Behind that, a set of thick curtains and behind that, a blind and a window that's closed. Over there, where my exit is, it's also closed all fans are off because of the background noise. So it gets pretty hot. So when I want to wear something very, very smooth, because that also helps with your green screen, and I found on my skin, black or gray is working best, but I wear things that are tight and have smooth edges so that it keys out really well. But this top is a bit too hot to wear right now. So I had a solution today, and it's pretty straightforward so long as you you know, your audience can't see that just like a newscaster, there's nothing on underneath it. 
bare bright white lights. Oh well, you know me. It's time I revealed it all anyway. So get your camera out, whether it's your iPhone, whether it's a camera and studio lights, whether you have a whole production team. Take it all out, feel confident, know that you can do this, have fun with it, and share any tips with other people you have because we are in such a visual phase of our lives. Fast, furious videos is what people want. Fast is the only thing I don't have, but I've got information to share and I'm happy to share it with you. Take good care. Until the next time, CherylAnnWebster.com.